So especially when you're just getting started with Kubernetes and you want to set up Kubernetes resources, ideally, or maybe at the beginning, especially with pure YAML files, it might be quite difficult to get started. Yes, there are several different resources, examples, explanations and so on, on how to set up simple resources. However, from there, it might be quite difficult to stretch your skills and set up more complex environments, more complex resources. So in that case, several different tools could help you. One of the tools that we explored in a previous video is called Customize. Now, Customize allows you to set up your resources, adapt your Kubernetes resources depending on the environment you want to set up. You can pass different configurations into your Kubernetes manifest to set up those resources in different environments and so on, which is quite handy. However, in that case, you still have to know how to interact with YAML files, how to set everything up, what are those different resources, what is a service, what is a pod, and so on, right? So today I want to show you a different tool that might make the onboarding quite easy. It has a really comprehensive UI that shows you the different resources that are running within your cluster and provides you with access to those resources as well as ways to set up new resources. Today we are going to look at Portainer. <laughs> Hello there and welcome to my channel. For those who are new here, my name is Anais and this is 100 Days of Kubernetes, where I aim to explore something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days and share it with you here on my channel. Now, if you're here watching and you're interested in Kubernetes, you might also be interested in my weekly DevOps newsletter where I share free online learning resources from across the space, from amazing people such as yourself, going on every Sunday right to your inbox. Sign up below. <laughs> so, let's get started with today's content. So over here I have my daily notes on Portana in this case and how to set it up. You can follow the link over here to install everything. Now once you install it, I can show you, you have to make sure that the pods are running correctly. So you install it. In my case, install it as Kubernetes YAML manifest. So I can go ahead and say kubectl config and I want to get my context. As you can see, I'm on my Docker Kubernetes cluster. Now I want to go ahead and get all of the resources that are my main namespace portainer. So I'm going to go ahead and as you can see over here, I have all of the resources. The pod is currently running. Now I can go ahead and open up localhost and it's running on this port. Um, so as you can see, my session, I have already been logged in. My session expired. So I'm just going to go ahead and sign in again. Uh, use use a password manager. It pays off. <laughs> anyway, so as you can see over here, I'm on my home screen, whatever you want to call it. I have my local cluster connected, my default cluster. Uh, I see the Kubernetes version that it's using, number of nodes I have. We can also try it out in a bit with kind and use multiple nodes. That might be interesting. Now I have a space where I can add more users to my account as well, which is pretty nice. I can create teams. I can create specific roles for people. I can add endpoints to my cluster. Um, I think let's have a look at that. <laughs> and then I can also add, for example, if I would want to use private containers and with, within containers, I will show you in a second how to set up uh, pods through the interface itself. Um, I could go ahead and add the credentials to my Docker Hub in this case. So I would just hit authentication and I could add the credentials to my Docker Hub. I'm not going to do it since all of my container images on Docker Hub are public. So I don't have a need for that. You can also add your own registries, um, which is pretty nice. And within settings, you have some additional settings that I did not explore yet. However, let's head over to home and check out our cluster. Now, as you can see, there are several different resources listed, which I'm a little bit confused at because if I, for example, hit application, you can see I actually have one application running. So I'm not sure like what those resources actually refer to. As you can see, I set up this application that's currently running. Um, now I could go ahead, it's got running in my namespace demo. So I could go ahead and just show you the equivalent, what it would look like with kubectl. Now kubectl get all in namespace demo. And then here, those are all the resources that I set up through the web, like through Portainer itself. I didn't use any Kubernetes manifests, uh, which is pretty handy. 
especially like if you are unsure, if you just want to play around with it, if you just want to use Kubernetes maybe for the first time. Um, also, there are some advanced options for using Proteina, uh, which I haven't explored yet. So let's take a look. So over here, I have my container image, which is a basic React example application that shows some articles from Hacker News. So we're going to go ahead and use that to set up a new application in Portainer. Now I'm just going to go hit add application, um, React app. Then the image I want to use is this one, and I want to use it with tag 3.0.0. .0. Uh, resource pool, I'm going to say the demo namespace again. If you want to add another namespace, um, I think right now you would have to do it through the, or I at least did it through the client. So kubectl create namespace, and then we're just going to call it test. So once I've set it up, you would have to refresh. So it appears here and you could use it. Um, now the stack, I'm just not going to specify anything right now. My app does not require any environment variables in this case. So I'm just going to leave that in empty as well. So I don't need any storage for this application. I can set some limits. I don't actually know what kind of limits this would require. So um, run on multiple instances of the container. See, those are like those are like examples of I never had to really think about that. Maybe I did something wrong in the past and I should have thought about these kind of options, but I never really had to think about these options actually. So um, I need a, like a second to actually think about which one should I choose because to, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure. I think I want to choose replicated instead of global in this case maybe two replicas. Let's check that out. And then publishing the application at rule. No, I don't know how to use this rule. <laughs> and um, internal, I want to publish the application report on all nodes of the cluster. Now that requires me to set up a port. In this case, let's set up the container port, just 80. Okay, told me to use that. And let's see what happens if I de deploy this application on my cluster. So as you can see right now, I have zero from two replicas. So let's see how that might change, hopefully changes. Ah, no, I refreshed, both replicas are currently running. Now let's have a look at this application. Again, it's, it's really nice, it shows me like exactly like additional information such as um, when it was created and by whom. So if you use it as a team, that's quite useful. Um, I can also head over to the networking port mapping and see how the ports are currently mapped. Um, what's a stack? I can also see the logs of the container itself. Okay. I don't know what those logs actually refer to. Let's head out of that. Let's maybe have a look at this itself. Now, I think those logs are actually the setup logs itself. So those are maybe more useful for me in that case. Um, okay, so they are running. Now, can I access the application? That's actually what I want to know. How do I access the application now? Where do I see that I can access it? Oh, and it also here provides me, that's handy, it provides me with some Kubernetes manifest. So I can also see, for example, cluster IP and the port mapping of that. So the port is 80, target port is 80, the node port is in this defined as uh, 30,080. <laughs> and I can see that it's currently using localhost. So should I be able to access it through local? Let's have a look at that. After playing around again a bit with the, <laughs> with the different ports, and as you can see here, I had a look at one of the running um, applications. So I have two pods running right now. I have a replica set of two, and I had a look at one of them and received some additional information on the pod itself. However, if it says, so in this case, um, it says here that it's accessible through localhost. It doesn't 
use, I mean, doesn't use immerse in that case. It's just uh, exposing a node port. And then the node port is basically 30,080, like just set. And if I just look for that, I can access my application through localhost. So this is my running application. Let's see if Portana has some, yeah, there are some posts. That's nice. So you can go ahead and check that out. It's a really nice filter. Um, awesome. So going back to my application, <laughs> um, that's a running application. So let's explore Portana further. Okay, so let's copy this resource here that I actually used to set up this. It's not actually a volume, it's a part in a volume when I set it up. <laughs> so let's go ahead and go back to Portana itself. Okay, so over here, refreshing, it should be gone now. See, I deleted that. Okay, so we want to add a new application, new resource. Now we want to do it from a YAML manifest. Let's head over to the documentation. Where is it? Advanced deployment. Oh, there's an advanced deployment. Let's go back. Advanced deployment. Mm -hmm. We are going in advanced mode over here. So. <laughs> That's how advanced this will get here. <laughs> no. Uh, resource pool. Let's do test. The one that I set up earlier. Nice. Um, Kubernetes. See, you can also use Docker Compose. This is getting really advanced. <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> Don't take it badly. Um, okay. So this should all be fine. So I can just go ahead and create it. Okay, it says waiting. I'm waiting. I can wait. It says running. Okay, so can I still see? Maybe because it's not specified as like a volume volume, I can't see like more information on it, even though it should create some sort of volume something. Okay, let's do this again. Okay, so once you create volumes and you can do that also through this section, the advanced deployments, um, you, they will appear in your volume section. However, I didn't get a container running right now um, that actually connects to one of those volumes. Um, I just used some examples online. As you can see here, it provides me with different warnings um, and also information on the like words, deployed words used when it was created, the size of the volume and so on, which like additional information, which is quite useful. I can also have a look at the YAML that was used to deploy this um, and so on. So that's that's quite handy. Now, if you were to set up a um, pod that uses a volume or has a volume attached to it, it wouldn't show up. That's probably something that I'm not currently getting, but it's it's really interesting. So uh, just a quick recap. Um, this is just the, let's have a look here, the Kubernetes side of things of Protein. I haven't explored the Docker side and also, wait, where's the other one? One second. This is just here, the Kubernetes side of things of Protein. I haven't explored the Docker side or this agent side. So I'm definitely gonna do that. It's quite interesting. It's interesting to use. Would I recommend it? Uh, if you're getting started and you really want to dive into Kubernetes Manifest, um, don't just use Portana, I guess, for your deployments because you will it will prevent you to some extent to get into the YAML files, to dive into those and actually get started using YAML. So I would recommend using pure YAML first and going through the pain of using kubectl for literally everything that you do. And yeah, that, <laughs> that will allow you to, to get started maybe easier even. But I also recommend you to check out something like Pertainer to um, try out different things, especially when you're getting started. I mean, right now it's, it's interesting to play around with it to see what works and what doesn't. It gives me different um, well error messages as well as I could just see trying it out. Um, then I wouldn't necessarily get deploying right through my, um, through my client. So yeah, have a look. It's an interesting tool. I'm not yet there where I guess I understand full potential of it. Um, there are different, more advanced options that you can use. You could, for example, use it for uh, distributed edge computing and so on. So 
those are <laughs> it sounds fancy but um, those are like things that you could do with it as well like more advanced things that i haven't explored here so definitely have a look don't just yeah um sign it don't just sign it off there are definitely different um, use cases for it. Now, this is it for today. I hope it was useful. If it was, again, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for upcoming videos. I would highly appreciate your support. I hope to see you next time. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.